Um, so let's just dive right into contract law. So what is contract law, right? Uh, the usual definition of contract law would be, it's an agreement between two or more people. I tell you I'm gonna do something. You tell me, and I agree that you're gonna do that thing for me and you get it done, right? That's typically the usual um, description of what a contract is. Um, but it's also important to know that in contract law itself, there's a difference between a simple agreement and an actual contract. Because it's easy to just get carried away and say, oh yeah, we had, a, we had a contract, we had a contract. And it's really not a contract in law. It's basically a simple agreement. And I'd say uh, the key distinction between both is one is an agreement is enforceable. It's not enforceable, so it's not binding in law and a contract is binding. And I'll tell you why or how that works, right? So for an agreement, so all, all contracts are agreements, but not all agreements are contracts. Now for an agreement to translate or to become a contract, it has to have certain elements that puts it, takes it away from just a simple gentleman's honor discussion to something that is legally enforceable. Now those elements are, an offer, acceptance, consideration, mutual consent, legal, all of those sound very technical, but we'll use an example, right? So there's a difference between me sitting at the table and telling my brother, oh, or telling Luke, I'm like, oh, hi, Luke, um, I really like your phone, right? Um, and I can see you're trying to buy another one. When you buy another one, would you give me your current phone? And Luke is like, yeah, sure, I'll give it to you. And that's it, right? There's a difference between that and going to, let's say Anna, and I say, oh, hi, Anna, I see you're trying to buy a new phone. Um, when you get a new phone, will you sell your new phone to me? And Anna says, yes. And, I, and, and Anna says, yes, I'll sell it to you. How much are you offering? And I tell Anna, oh, I'm going to give you 20 pounds for your phone. And she's like, oh, yeah, sure. Um, I'll take 20 pounds for the phone, right? And we shake hands. I give Anna 20 pounds. Anna gives me the phone. Um, so can anyone tell me which one of those examples is an agreement and which is a contract? Uh, the first one was the, the agreement. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, you're right, Luke. Thank you for that. Yes, the first one was an agreement. So why, why is that one an agreement, Luke, or anyone else? Why was my agreement, my agreement with you? Why is it an agreement and why isn't it a contract? It was um, no like action was actually taken. It was just me. Yes, agreeing to whatever you proposed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah, I proposed something, right? Which is the offer, right? But the, and you agreed, which is an acceptance, which is also fine, but there was no consideration. So I didn't promise to give you anything for the phone. I didn't, uh, or, wait, let me just pause. Let me actually allow someone else speak. Anyone else wants to tell me why? Well, look at me, I saw you nodding when I was, you know, giving the, making the distinction. Um, I was just remembering, you know, I was just remembering all the, um, the legal jargon and legalese that I heard in my law class. But mm -hmm. basically what Luke said, that there was only an offer and an acceptance. There was no mm -hmm. terms of agreement. Um, There's a lot of, a lot of elements missing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, you're both right. Yeah, there was, consideration was missing. I didn't promise to give Luke any money. I didn't promise to do anything for Luke in return for the phone. Um, yeah, I told him I was going to, I wanted the phone and he said, yeah, but there wasn't any clear, like mutual content on what was going to happen. Um, it was legal because again, for your contract, you can't, you can't contract to do something that is illegal. So I can't contract with, or I can, but it won't be enforceable at law, right? So I can't have a contract to say, I'm going to do something illegal. Like I'm going to, buy drugs or do something that is just not legal, right? Because it won't be enforced by law. So I think the, now that we're clear on that distinction, we will understand, you know, what our day-to-day -day contracts are like. So I walk into a McDonald's, I pay for a burger, I want a burger, I get my burger back, burger and I, you know, give them what, one pound, two pounds, whatever it costs, you know, or Rashford plays for Man United. There was definitely some contract to say, you're going to come and play for us, you know, and He's got millions of pounds and he has to show up and he has to play. If he chooses not to play, 
then Manu can, you know, get him to play or get their money back from him, right? Because he's had a contract, there's been an offer, there's been an acceptance, there's been a consideration, which is whatever millions of pounds has been paid. There's mutual consent because they are both clear that he's gonna get paid and he's gonna play for the club, right? Um, and it could also be, I mean, contracts are also not always a simple buy and sell or a simple, I pay you and we move on, right? It could also involve um, more complex arrangements. So say for instance, um, you know how like recently ASOS acquired like Arcadia, like the group that owns Debenhams and all of all Selfridges and all of all those um, stores, right? that would have involved several multiple contracts because they would have agreed to, you know, buy the actual business. They would have agreed in some cases to transfer the employees from one business to another. They would have agreed to transfer assets. Sometimes they would have even, or possibly they could have even agreed to also transfer obligations or debts amongst themselves. So um, sometimes it's, it could be as complex as that. But essentially, um, all of this is to say, why is, the, why is contract law important, right? So why would I enter into a contract versus an agreement? Anyone have an idea? No, why? Why would I enter into a contract versus an agreement? Like, why wouldn't I just do a simple agreement with Luke versus a contract with Fulukemi? Or a contract um, with Anna? The contract will, it will make sure that the thing like actually happens. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Kind of like putting your money where your mouth is that like you can't go back on your word if things mm -hmm. don't work out you have a detailed plan of what's going to happen especially for businesses where both sides have a lot to lose absolutely um you're both right thank you luke and thank you for looking at me you're both absolutely correct um contracts ensure that you know you perform your obligations it ensures that you know there's no abuse of power it prevents fraud so um, if I agree to do something, if I promise to do something, um, contract law is the reason why I'm sure you get it done. Because if you don't get it done, then there's, a fr there's this framework of laws, which is called contract law, that I can rely on to get you to get it done or to get my money back or to get some sort of remedy if you don't do what you said you would do. So for instance, if I had given Anna the money for the phone and she refused to give me the phone, then I can go to contract law and say, look, what are my options? I, I really need this phone. And Anna's refused to give me the phone as she has my 20 pounds. I need to get my phone, right? So one of the options is to sue Anna, like, you know, get her to give me my money, take her to court, get her to give me either my phone or my money, you know, depending on what remedy or what option I choose to explore. Um, or it's the same it's the same framework that Manchester United will rely on if after they've paid Rashford millions of pounds, he then says, oh, you know what? I don't feel like playing for Manu anymore. I want to play for Liverpool. And they're like, no, no way. You know, we're going to take you to court. We're going to sue you. Um, you're going to get sued and you're going to have to play for us. So essentially it's, it's um, I mean, it doesn't always end up in court. Sometimes you could start with mediation. So for instance, if I paid for my Netflix subscription and I don't have access to Netflix, I mean, my immediate request would be to go to court, right? I would get on the phone with the Netflix customer service and let them know, look, I paid for my subscription for April or for February. Why, why am I not, you know, seeing, why don't I have access to watch movies, you know? And then we can get through that. And if this is a dispute, then probably end up in court. I present evidence that I had a contract with Netflix. I get access or I get my money back. But in, in summary, um, and both the Luke and Fuluke me right. It ensures that you know you do what you promise. Contract law ensures you do what you promise you say you do. And it also ensures that you know obligations are met and it helps to prevent fraud, prevent abuse of power. Um, and it also gives people confidence in the system because once everyone can see that they can rely on contract law, people would want to get into more contracts, right? 